Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest flat earth proof of the week. If the ball earth that you see in all your pictures from space is really true, and we all know a sphere, every place on a sphere is curving, making a ball. So if your earth pictures are, are real, and say you're in a rocket or a space shuttle, whatever, you're flying out in space, how would you fly into earth? You, do you get what I'm saying, Globers? Uh, no, not really. But then again, it doesn't matter. If you're a flat earther, you don't need to make sense. Just open your mouth and let those words roll. How does a boat sail around the world without going up and downhill? Right, now before today's video starts, some good news. Meet Space Comma the Baby Goat. Last week I put out this poll after being asked by the amazing Crafty Keeler to name one of her baby goats and you were very, very certain in the name that you all wanted. I've linked Crafty Keeler's channel in the description. She makes some very interesting videos looking at the psychological aspect of conspiracy theories. It's definitely, definitely worth checking out. Anyway, that gives me an idea. I wonder if Flat Earther Nathan Oakley can do an impression of a baby goat. Give it your best. Nah. It's not bad, actually. Uh, now, I have a long history of correcting flat earthers when they say silly things, but since my last video, I've been aware that there are a number of occasions where I myself have been corrected. And today, we're going to look at two of those. Firstly, is by this guy. He's not even a flat earther. He's just an anti-modern physics conspiracy theorist. That's right. Draft Science is a fellow YouTuber who used his exceptional attention to detail to call me the Paik Physicser of the Week. And since making that video, he's followed it up by issuing me a physics challenge. Now, to be fair, I'm not sure if that's a real challenge or a fake one, but I will get around to it and I will find out. Anyway, he's not my biggest fan. Crap. That's what it is. Baldy crap. So how did he debunk me? Well, he did it while he watched this video of mine, History Revisited. It's actually one of my favourites. I've linked it in the description if you've not seen it. Uh, in this video, I tell the story of wave particle duality, but I rewrite the history of some of the key plays involved just because I'm silly. But it does appear that draft science doesn't understand the meaning of satire. Thomas Young was named Thomas Young by his parents because as a child, he looked very young. Huh. I mean, I mean, so, so yeah, again, it's not even close to funny because the last name, he didn't have any choice about the last name. The parents only choose the first name. Yeah, so you get the idea. He obviously didn't understand that I was mixing real science with fake history. But while I was watching that, this happened. Hello. Hello, it's me, Flat Earth Millionaire, on my spirit level mobile phone again. Oh, hi, yeah. What can I do for you? You need to go on to Ranty Flat Earth's channel because he's going to debunk you now, live. So I went on YouTube and I found this. Flat Earth Millionaire was right. I was about to be humiliated live on the Flat Earther's channel. Now, if you don't know Ranty Flat Earth by now, he's actually a pretty nice guy and we really love him. In fact, we've created our own little introduction for him. These are the adventures of Ranty the Flat Earther. As he explores the strange world known to Fraggles as The Globe. Now, the reason he has that introduction is because he's secretly a globe hero. He will film things that are only possible on a globe, like this boat sailing over the horizon. And then he will point blank deny what he's just seen, like on this occasion where he made this video, no boat went over the horizon. So let me bring you up to speed with what I said that he's about to debunk. In the last video, I showed you this image, which was presented by a flat earther as evidence for the earth not being a globe. The yellow line is a flight path taken by some airlines from Sydney to Santiago, and the red line is what the flat earther believes would be the fastest route. Now, the fact that some flights take the path that's marked in yellow is a little bit confusing to this flat earther. He seems to think that on a globe, that yellow path would make absolutely no sense whatsoever, and we should be following that red path, as in his words, it's the shortest distance between those two points. But I tried to explain to him this isn't the case, because when we take a 3D object like a globe and we try and flatten it out onto a 2D surface like a map, things get distorted. Now, that point is highlighted here in this image from Qantas Airlines' own website. The red line shows what a direct flight from Sydney to Santiago would look like if it was flattened out onto a two-dimensional map. Yeah, it's a very simple point, and here it is just in a nutshell. Well, in a nutshell, the Flat Earther simply thinks this. If the Earth is a globe, a direct flight from Sydney to Santiago should pass north of New Zealand. Meanwhile, back in the real world, everybody else thinks that a direct flight from Sydney to Santiago must pass south of New Zealand and will absolutely not be a straight line when plotted on a two-dimensional map. So, after hearing me say that, what do you think Ranty Flat Earth's reaction was? Do you think it was A, to maybe sit and think about it for five minutes? Or do you think it was B, fire up a live stream 
and do this. But the bigger problem you've got here is that you think the red line is the quickest point between A and B. Now, what you've got to realise is that when we turn a globe into a flat map, you distort the picture. And that means that the fastest path between these two points on a globe is anything but your red line. Oh, oh, oh dear me. Oh, dear. One more time. Oh, 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 oh dear me. But it wasn't just Ranty enjoying this. Blood could be smelt in the comments section and the knives were out. Ha ha, is it the red colour that makes it wrong? Lol. Why don't you make it yellow? Then it would be correct. I guess other straight lines are not the fastest path either. The fastest route isn't a straight line. Is this some new globe geometry? Hello, it's me. I've just popped by to say that I'm, I'm going to regret having posted this when you release this video. Now, I could go on, but you get the picture. But then Ranty made his mistake. You see, it was all well and good while he was just saying I was wrong. But then he had to try and prove it. I've actually plotted these points out uh, on Google Earth. Here we go. Stop. The incompetence you are about to see can only be carried out by trained professionals. Uh, at the bottom here, we have Santiago. And up at the top there, we have Sydney. So let's scroll in, let's let's have a look at this. So here we have Santiago. There we go, there's Santiago. And let's have a look. Let's follow the red line, point A to point B. Stop. When attempting this in future, please try it offline first for the following reason. Um, so this is, uh, this is on a globe earth, by the way. Yeah, we know what it is, but have you spotted it yet? Yeah, we know you didn't. Um, anyway, now what I want you to do is totally misquote me and then still claim that the Flat Earther is correct. Your words are absolutely crystal clear. You're saying that on your globe Earth, that the points between uh, Santiago and Sydney, it's anything but the quickest route from point A to point B and that this is wrong. So I'm sorry, but you screwed up, mate. You screwed up. The guy that did the presentation has it absolutely correct. No, Ranty, what you've just plotted on your screen isn't this. It's this. Anyway, just to help you remember, I've put a little song together for you. Oh, Ranty, you did a live stream and you tried to debunk me. But you should have taken a look at New Zealand. You're so funny. It's above the line. But now it's below. So I guess you're wrong, but that's just the way it always goes. And if that doesn't help, how about this? Yes, in this picture here, drawn by the Flat Earther, the red line clearly passes north of New Zealand. But when Ranty tried to recreate this line on a globe model, the line had to pass south of New Zealand. And finally, Ranty, representing that on a two-dimensional map would look a little bit like this. Not this. So I hope in future, Ranty, next time a flat earther tries to tell you that the flight paths we see don't make sense on a globe earth, that you remember this moment and you put them right. Now, as far as the yellow line and why some flights have to take that path, Wolfie6020 explains that really, really well in one of his videos. So for the third week on the trot, I've linked one of his videos in the description. In that video, he talks about the cabotage law and how legal restrictions apply to flight companies from the Northern Hemisphere that prevent them going from Sydney to San Diego in one stop. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to rob Wolfie of any views. So he gives a very, very interesting description of all sorts in that video. Please check on it. But for now, Ranty, at the end of your stream, what was your message to me? You got it wrong. Man up. Accept it. And there we go. On the fly. And I do love the way he signs off on that. On the fly. Yes, we do know it was on the fly because if you'd have put any preparation into it, you probably wouldn't have made it. Uh, anyway, do you know what your mistake is now, Ranty? It's pretty clear. So. Yeah, and maybe next time before you go live, maybe put a bit more research into it, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I learned my mistake. 
Now, as much of a nice guy that Ranty is, I don't think that he's learned from his mistakes. When I go over to his channel, I don't see any videos correcting the mistake he made, and I don't see any comments on that video from Ranty explaining to his subscribers that he was wrong. And I don't really think that's fair on the subscribers that follow him and listen to what he's got to say. But you guys have been absolutely brilliant. I spent 10 minutes the other day trawling the comment section of that video, and because you guys were so excellent at pointing out the obvious, I've put together this little montage dedicated to you to be played alongside Oscar's version of the P1000 Globe Hero song. So this is my thank you to you. He's got a P1000, he ain't afraid to use it. He's got a P1000, he's only afraid he might lose it. But he pointed at the moon, he pointed at the stars, he pointed at Uranus and he'll point it at Mars. But every time he touches the camera, Ranty proves the globe, he proves the globe. He's a great globe prover. Proves the globe, he proves the globe. He's a great globe prover. And his friends, they don't talk to him anymore. Because he burnt the video and I woman picked a book off of the floor. He failed the boat going over the now, if you left a comment on that video and it didn't make the montage, then I'm really sorry about that. However, I was getting increasingly worried about Ranty Flat Earth and his inability to realize that he'd made a mistake. So much so that I felt I had to reach out for some spiritual help. Hello, it's me. Conspiracy cats. Oh, I like that. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, you can, conspiracy. Well, actually, I've got two questions and they're both for a friend of mine called Ranty. First of all, he doesn't think he can ever see his boat going over the horizon. I'm worried. I have a friend called Randy. All I can say is that he can't do it. Oh, isn't that cute? It's not quite the word I'd use for it, but uh, crack on anyway. Now, over the horizon, you mean dead or over the horizon as in moving forward and doing something productive? No, I mean literally over the horizon. He filmed a boat going over the horizon and said it wasn't. I can't help him unless he comes to me to get some help. You can't, you can't help a person. They have to help themselves. I could not agree more. Thank you very much. But I do have one more question. He keeps telling me he's confused about a red line and I'm really worried. I just, I just don't know what to do. The only th conspiracy theory, the only thing you can do for him right now is just keep on loving him as a friend. Right. Well, uh, I'll be honest. That's easier said than done. Yeah, she was great fun. Very helpful. Now, before we dive into Chatbox Travels and have a look at some comments, we really should put something at least vaguely educational into this video. So I'm going to take a quick look at how we take a 3D object like a globe and turn it into a, a 2D representation. We're going to start by taking a look at something called a stereographic projection. And then we're going to take a look at a cylindrical projection, which produces a type of map that has confused our flat earthers so far. Take it away. So let's take a toy globe and then mark a point at, let's say, the North Pole and place it on a piece of paper. We're then going to draw an imaginary line from the North Pole through the sphere until it hits the paper. Now the two black dots we're left with represent a point on that globe and the point on the paper where we draw it. Now if we carried on doing this through every single point in the globe, we'd end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now you won't see many school kids using these in the classroom, but they are favoured for people who work around the poles due to the fact that on a stereographic projection the meridians radiate in straight lines from them. The Mercator map that the Flat Earth has showed us is an example of a cylindrical projection, only in this point we draw our lines from the centre of the globe, and then we unfold the cylinder to show our map. So there we have it. Now, like I said before, both Wolfie 6020 and Blue Marble Science have videos linked in the description. They have dealt with this subject uh, very well in the past week or so, but for now, Chatbox Travels. Chat. Box. Travel. Space Karma. Now, if you've not seen Chatbox Travels before, this is a part of my show where I get to sit back and look at some of the fan mail I've been receiving from Flat Earthers. Sometimes I might reply, or sometimes I might just stand in awe at the sheer unique brilliance of what I am witnessing. Now, we're going to start off with a regular contributor who seems to be struggling to get his words out. Hello, it's me again, Johnny I'm in Jussie Pants. Anyway, I'm here just to tell you that you just love proving you are only here to prove 
Hagao. Dumb of a liar you choose to... Oh, you know what? That didn't work out well. Just give me a second. I'll be back with another one. Right, I'm back again. I'll get it right this time. Anyway, what I want to say is the globe is... D d oh, give me a minute. Okay, this one's not quite as bad. I hope it just doesn't unravel itself at the end. Uh, you love proving you're a pathetic liar. I'm not sure whether I should use a comma or a full stop, so I'll put them both in and then cover me bases, you know. Uh, you get butt hurt every time we destroy all your dumb globe lies. Again, but one of each. Uh, you are butt hurt that reality Deb... Oh, oh, not again. Oh, this is getting exhausting. I hope I've got this one right. Uh, you guys fail to provide physical evidence for Earth curvature full stop. Oh, what is that line there for? You know what? Even I can spot what's wrong with this one. I give up. It's really, really, really upsetting. Right, well, thanks for that. I'm sure we'll be able to bring you all an update next week. Uh, next up is a very nice man. Yeah, take that. And why does he think that? I wonder. Because you're a liar and your, your pants are on fire. Probably. Right. And why am I a liar? Well, according to this post, I'm a liar because apparently I know the truth. And why do I know the truth? Well, I know the truth because I should know better. And why should I know better? Because I've been exposed to Nathan and Quantum Eraser explaining it to me. Right, good servant. Well, this is just for you. I think we all remember the time when Nathan Oakley was telling people boats vanished from the bottom up, not because they went over the curve of the earth, but because of something called the diffraction limit. Now, I did give Nathan Oakley the chance to explain to me what diffraction was. How did that pan out? So there we go. So I'll ask one more time. What is diffraction? I'll give you 10 seconds. Go. What's diffraction? Oh, it's quiet. He doesn't know what diffraction is. To be fair, you didn't give him 10 seconds. Uh, I'll give you 10 seconds to Google it. Go on. What's diffraction? Oh, and good servant, just in case you didn't know, the guy on the other end of that telephone call, you know, the one who wasn't speaking, that was Nathan Oakley. Now, next up is somebody who has assumed, just because I did a debate on evolution, that I'm trying to disprove the existence of God, regardless of the fact that I've never ever made such a claim, nor would I. Hello, my name is Free Dongy Pongington, and even though I don't like you, I'm here to give you the comment that's the gift that just keeps on giving. You'll see what I mean. Let's go. What happens when morons think that they are smarter than everybody else but? Yeah, I'm sorry. I've just got to stop that there just to marvel at the genius that was the end of that first line. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? But it gets better. Yeah, I'm glad you spotted that. But it's also a no punctuation challenge. Very difficult to read without any punctuation from start to finish. Let's see if you can do it without having an asthma attack. Okay, here goes. What happens when morons think that they are smarter than everybody else, but they can't provide evidence that God doesn't exist or that the universe can be created from nothing and they proceed to tell you that life can evolve from non-organic matter even though biogenesis proves evolution? Easy peasy. Yeah, and uh, we're still not done yet. And here is the third and final gift from this comment. Enjoy. Well, I'm not sure how biogenesis can actually disprove evolution when it was created to disprove spontaneous generation, which was the formation of life magically out of nothing which is exactly what you believe oh you spotted them all well done i'll be back next week and next up is a comment from somebody who just like good servant from before likes to listen to nathan oakley and quantum eraser and then just repeat their arguments without having done any research whatsoever or attempting to get any sort of understanding about what those arguments are and it's all fun and games until your memory starts to go Hello, my name is Flat Earth is the Truth, and I'm going to spam your comment section over and over again with the same post. Ready? Space is fake because it violates the second law of entropy. Deal with it. The second law of entropy? Alexa, what's that? The second law of entropy isn't a real thing. You need to stop watching Flat Earth nonsense on YouTube. Exactly. You see, the old adage that flat earthers like to roll out, that they are the ones who do the research and they are the ones who know what they're talking about, becomes even more of a mockery when you start posting nonsense like that. Uh, anyway, it was the second law of thermodynamics, and that still doesn't prove that we can't have an atmosphere next to the vacuum of space. Right, let's bow out with my favourite. You know, I often get asked what it takes to make a great songwriter. And I always say, there are no great songwriters. There's just great inspiration. You only need to know where to look. I wanna kick on the bald guy's face. Kick on the bald guy's face. 
Here come the bald guy's face and break his teeth off. And the other half gonna pay throughout his whole life. Absolutely beautiful.